morning, all. Morning. Morning. Uh, I guess I'm your warm-up act today, so uh, <laughs> glad everyone is here this early. Wasn't sure there were going to be many, many people here this early. Uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm the Chief Marketing Officer at Pixability. Uh, we work with some of you in the room, but for those of you that don't know us, uh, we're a video advertising software and insights company. We're based in Boston. We have offices all over the country, one in, here in New York, all over the country and in Europe. And uh, we're doing a lot of work with QSR brands and their agencies lately, which is why we're here. Uh, and so today I'm going to be sharing some of the things we're seeing uh, from the work we're doing with QSR brands. And let's see if this works. It does. Fantastic. Uh, so I'm going to start with this sort of overall stat uh, that, that is kind of a striking stat about what's happening in our industry. Uh, next year, 82% of internet consumption is going to be video. Now we all know that video is sort of taking over, but this stat really sums it up. I mean, this is this is how we're we're going to have to reach everyone in, in coming years. Now, now, the other thing that we're seeing in our regular lives is is we're seeing patterns of this in our regular lives. Now, this is a picture of my daughter. She's 16. She would hate that I have a picture of her up here. <laughs> um, this is how she watches shows. Now she is in front of the TV, but she's not looking at the TV. She doesn't watch any linear TV at all. Uh, she watches. Uh, shows on her phone that are not linear TV shows and she watches YouTube and when she comes home with her friends from school they sit on this couch in front of a big TV and they watch YouTube on the TV they don't watch any linear TV so I'm just using that as an example we've all seen this it's it's happening everywhere uh, I think you know the e-marketer stats on the other side of this slide sum it up too we're gonna lose 17 million uh, pay TV viewers over the next few years and at the same time gain about 17 million connected TV viewers so the shift is happening and we're all seeing it. So as agencies and QSR brands, how are we gonna reach this, you know, people in this new, in this new reality? Uh, according to eMarketer and other analyst firms, these are the platforms that are gonna take up most of our ad spend uh, next year. Uh, it's more than 75% of our advertising on video is gonna be through YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and connected TV. So for all of us, mastering these platforms is gonna be the key to reaching not just people like my daughter, but people of all ages. And for Pixability, we, we've, uh, for those of you who know us, we've, we've become known really for our expertise in YouTube, but over the last few years, we've built up an expertise in these other platforms, and so we think of ourselves as sort of the connective tissue between the, uh, across these major platforms. All right, so let's talk a little bit about QSR. Um, so again, like I said, we're working with a lot of QSR brands, and we are also, in addition to being an advertising platform, we're also an insights company. We have, we do insights work for, paid work for, for companies. Uh, Google's actually our biggest client. They hire us to do uh, insights work all the time. Uh, our next study is on QSR, so that's one of the reasons why we're here today, too, to give you guys a little sneak preview of it. It's coming out in a few weeks. Um, so I'm gonna give you just some of the, some of the highlights of things that we're seeing in this study that might, may help you all. Uh, this is just sort of a, a broad view at the distribution of um, when, when QSR brands are putting out video content on YouTube. Um, and as you can see, it's fairly flat across the year with a, with a spike in Q4, but the, the sort of you know, consistency that you see here is what we're hearing from a lot of brands we're working with. It's just this sort of always on strategy for them. There's, there's, no, there's no bad time to be pushing QSR videos out onto YouTube. And the other pattern we're seeing, which you know we've all seen in other industries as well, is what's driving the growth in QSR. The, the QSR space on YouTube as a topic has grown very fast, 44% over the last two years. What's driving this are mostly users and influencer content. Brand content, sorry, I keep doing that. Brand content is obviously a, a piece of it, but uh, we all know that how, how important influencers and users are on this space. So, so what do we do about that? Well, first let's look at an example of user-generated piece of content uh, that worked. Um, this, is, this was created by a, a, user, uh, a user community called Target, not the company Target, but a user community called Target. And all this was was a, it's sort of a how-to video. It's a do-it-yourself, how to build a cardboard vending machine in, in your own house that distributes McDonald's cheeseburgers. And uh, it's, you know, it looks like it was created by one of my kids. It's, it's uh, totally homemade. Um, 58 million views this video has had. With insane engagement, um, it, it boggles my mind sometimes, and I sometimes tell my kids you should be creating some videos because it doesn't take much these days. But I guess the point is, 
Um, videos don't have to be high production value. They don't have to have a celebrity to be engaging on YouTube. Um, this is a very engaging video about QSR. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of brands start to do things more like this and, and feel like they don't have to have celebrities, high production value, et cetera. Uh, we do a lot of work with Google and they've been talking about this idea of personal prime time, the idea that the way we all think of prime time has changed. It's not eight to 10 o'clock sitting in front of your TV. It's watching whatever you want to watch, wherever you want to watch it, and it's not always high, high production value content. So I'm going to give you guys an example of a campaign that, that we worked with, uh, with Jack in the Box. And they, they were smart enough to uh, leverage influencers, knowing how big influencers, what a big part influencers play in the QSR space right now. Uh, they did this very cool campaign, Super Bowl campaign this year called Super Jack Monday. Um, and the whole idea of it was to drive people to their to to place orders on DoorDash uh, for the Super Jack Monday. And the and sort of the premise was the day after the Super Bowl, you need some recovery food. So you should you should you know order some Super Jack Monday from from uh, Jack in the Box. But what they did that was so smart is they chose influencers that aligned with their key personas, and they created little vignettes for for each of those uh, influencers that lined up with their personas, um, and ran this campaign with us. And the results were great. Um, obviously, I wouldn't be showing it if the results weren't great. Um, but they, you know, they, they reached all the goals that they were looking for. They had great brand lift, better than they had seen on any other campaign they had run. Um, they, they drove people to DoorDash, and they had search lift on DoorDash. Uh, they drove hundreds of thousands of store visits. The fact that you can track store visits on YouTube campaigns, to me, is very exciting because you can see obviously cost per visit and know what your cost per visitor is or revenue per visitor is and do the math. Um, and they saw great social growth. They saw uh, all of their social channels grow during this two week span better than their competitors. So this was a super successful campa campaign. And the reason I show it again is this idea that QSR brands have to take this sort of if you can't beat them, join them attitude now with influencers and, and try to leverage them, which, which I know a lot of you are, are also doing. Uh, this is just another stat from the uh, study we'll be releasing in a few weeks that just gives you a sense of the different uh, length of video that you see from influencers and users versus brands. With brands, they're, they're much shorter, obviously. Brands, 90% of brand videos are less than a minute. Most of these are ads. 80% um, of influencer and user videos are more than five minutes. So this tells you two things. Uh, obviously. I influencers and users create longer videos. Some of them might be very boring, but that, that, uh, that vending machine video was, I think it was five minutes. Um, the, the concept here, though, is that they are getting engagement. The longer videos are getting engagement, and we always tell our QSR customers, don't be afraid to, to try some longer form video. Uh, the other thing that we're seeing from this study is bumper ads are growing quickly within QSR companies. They're, they're, they're starting to use them more and more. Uh, a few years ago, it's just 2% of video, uh, videos created by QSR brands were bumper ads, these six-second you know, six unskippable bumper ads on YouTube, uh, grown to be about one out of every six video that a QSR brand creates now is a bumper ad. Now, what we see working best is this doesn't mean that people should just only do bumper ads and heavy up on that. It's uh, using these in conjunction with longer form video is something that we're seeing work really well, where you run a bumper ad and then you retarget people with this, uh, this longer form video. Sometimes even the reverse, you do a long form video and then you retarget with a bumper ad. All right, uh, and this is, just, this is just some data that shows you know, we saw that use, user and influencers do longer video and brands do shorter videos in general. But the question is, when brands do do longer videos, do they get engagement? And the answer is yes, they do get engagement. You can see that even though there weren't a lot of 10 minute plus videos by QSR brands, the ones that were done had high engagement and the yellow uh, diamond is, is uh, sentiment. So they, all, they had, you know, positive sentiment too. It'd be one thing if they had high engagement and people all hated them. Um, so again, this just, this just reemphasizes that what we're, what we're telling our clients is don't be afraid of the longer form video. And I'd like to give another example. This is, this is, a, this is something that we, we've all seen done, um, which is you know, a longer form video piece that's more about sort of the mission of the company versus pushing products. Uh, and this is a, a video Panda Express did. It was three and a half minutes. And again, rather than pushing product, it was about something they believed in. It was Asian Pacific American Heritage Month. And they did this very cool video with Connie Chung and the founders of Panda Express. Um, 
that was really engaging, had 8 million views, lots of engagement. Um, and obviously they, they did this, they, they also did you know, commercial video, but this, this video showed the most engagement of any video that they did. So, so long form is one thing, but also the topic of the long form tends to be more sort of mission-based, cause-based. Uh, we're actually doing a separate insight study on the, on the growth in cause-based um, advertising, which is, which is growing every year. All right, so I promised I'd be quick. It's early. Very happy that you guys all came this early. Uh, so th these are just s some quick takeaways fr from this. Uh, you know, obviously, right off the bat, at the, at the front end of this, I said, listen, we all know video is going to be huge, 82% of internet consumption next year. The, the ways to reach people that are consuming video are YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and connected TV. So if you're not figuring out those things, you're, you're going to be behind, behind on it. Uh, the second point is just uh, obviously influencers and users are driving longer form content, uh, low production value content that's very engaging for people. So don't think you have to be on a you know, television show uh, when you can be on a vending machine uh, created piece of content that has high engagement. Um, and, then, and then the last tip is just follow the model of, of other QSR brands that are trying longer form content and leveraging influencers to, to drive engagement the way that Jack in the Box and uh, Panda Express are. Um, and and if, you do, if you do have questions for us, so, so the QSR insight study that we're releasing, it'll be, it'll be out in about a week and a half. Uh, we'd love to share more of it. Again, this was just a, a sneak preview. And I know we work with some of you in the audience, but happy to answer questions for, for any of you. That's it. Matt, thank you very much. Um, any questions for Matt while we have him? We have a minute or so. Wait, uh, Mr. Martin here. Hold on one second. Hi, I wonder if you could talk a bit about the, the influencers, how you get control of them that are not your official influencers and basically leverage it. And then ultimately, are you seeing a different uh, metric from the QSRs in terms of what they view as uh, success? Is it sales? Is it discussion? Is it engagement? Yeah, well, we have a, so we have a, a platform that, that tracks influencers that shows how much engagement influencers are getting. And we usually start there with, with a client. And, but then you have to work backwards and look at the content that they're, that they're producing because sometimes some QSR influencers are doing, you know, negative content about QSR that you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to partner with or this ASMR stuff, which is not as, you know, not some, some people, you know, Stella tried it, but not, not, not everyone wants to be part of ASMR. So, so part of it is establishing first who, who the big influencers are, then seeing which ones match with, with what you're trying to say, which is what Jack in the Box did. They said, these influencers are very positive. They're all saying certain things and then connecting with them and, and trying to work with them to create a campaign like that. In terms of what people are measuring uh, is some of the things I showed in the Jack in the Box campaigns. Obviously, it's um, store visits, it's cost per store visit, it's brand lift. Uh, for them, they were looking at search lift as well. Uh, they were looking at how many people were driven to DoorDash to actually place orders of, of this stuff. So it's all metrics that, you know, it's funny. I still talk to some people that think of YouTube as just a, a branding vehicle, but there, there's, there's a lot of direct response stuff happening, which is why QSR brands, I think, are jumping all over it, so. Anyone else? Okay. Uh, Matt, you're probably here with a team, I'm guessing. I am. You'll okay. see Pixability people sprinkled around. <laughs> They're raising their hands. <laughs> yeah, raise your hand if you're with Matt and here. Oh, wow. Okay, great. Right here. Yeah. Mainly up front. That's good. Studious folks you've got on your team. Yes, here. and they're the ones that are working directly with the QSR brand, so they'll actually answer the questions a lot better than I will. So. <laughs> All right. 